Hello, everybody. Hello from Zimbabwe. Colleen Patrick Gaudreau here. We are in Zimbabwe at Victoria Falls, and this is our third country in a couple weeks. We've been to Rwanda, as you know. We've been to Botswana, as you know, and now we're in uh, Zimbabwe, and we're heading to South Africa this afternoon. And we'll be in Cape Town for a few nights, and I'm doing um, a little meet and greet there with um, some folks at the South African Vegan Society. Put on an event at a at the uh, Plant Cafe in Cape Town, so I'm excited to see everybody there. And um, and then we head back home. So our trip is coming to an end, and it's been a pretty remarkable time. And uh, I can't believe it was only two weeks ago that we were in Rwanda. Hello, Rose. I'm I'm actually missing California um, just because I'm just tired of living out of a suitcase, but it's been really a wonderful time. And uh, uh, yeah, Victoria Falls was really dramatic. Probably could have just been here one day, really. Um, we're in this really beautiful spot. Here, I'll show you how this spot is. This is um, the view from our room. So there's a big watering hole right there. So there are... Uh, there's wildlife there every single day. We've seen uh, elephants there and an alligator, or actually a crocodile, um, being freshwater. And just, you know, uh, warthogs and just lots of wildlife there. So this is um, some really um, vocal birds. So here's the um, the view. I'd have to take this off to show you the rest, but yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty lovely. And I miss, um, I miss, uh, I miss California, and you know Zimbabwe here just literally for Victoria Falls. But um, we had a really wonderful, um, several really delicious meals. A hotel, another hotel, closer to town, had um, some vegan things on the menu already. I've already put them on Happy Cow, so people who are coming to this area can find uh, options readily available for them. And uh, we've talked to the manager, and they were so sweet. We went there for lunch yesterday, had a wonderful corn and chickpea burger that was already on their menu, already vegan, but we're encouraging them to label it vegan because it wasn't labeled vegan. Um, not that it, you know, but there are other things on the menu they didn't have. They had, they had vegan meats and everything. They didn't put them on the menu. So we're just um, communicating with them about how to be more um, visible as a vegan-friendly restaurant. So... So we had a delicious dinner last night. I had a, uh, a chickpea lentil curry, and there was a falafel on the menu. There were, um, you know, there were noodle dishes. She actually had them switch out to rice noodles because the noodles had eggs in them. So they were very mindful, very sweet, and it was lovely. So, um, so we've had some wonderful food adventures the whole time we've been here in Africa and all the different countries we've been in. And anyone who ever thinks you would starve as a vegan in Africa, any African country so far that we've been in, it's so far from the truth. So it's been really lovely to be able to share all of that with you and demystify, really demystify a lot of misconceptions about, about Rwanda, about Botswana. Um, and, and obviously South Africa, I don't know, needs a lot of demystifying, but, uh, I would say my heart is still in Rwanda, and um, I'm 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 just really blown away by everything we've seen. So it's been really lovely, and I hope you've been enjoying all of the all of the photos and the videos. Ashley says, um, "Thank you for sharing your adventures. You're welcome. I'm really happy to do so." And hello, Elizabeth from Lafayette. Yeah, I'm very jealous. <laughs> I'm not jealous. I mean, obviously, I'm enjoying our time here. But now that we're coming to the end, you start getting a little itchy for being back home. I miss my cats. I miss um, I miss my curling iron. I do. I really miss my curling iron. And uh, I miss my bed. But um, we are looking forward to a really lovely time in Cape Town. So the first thing we're doing, let's see, we get there tonight. And tomorrow we actually go straight to Robben Island. So we're going to do a tour of Robben Island. Of course, where Nelson Mandela was imprisoned for many years. And then tomorrow night, I have the event at the uh, Peace, I think it's called Peace Cafe in Cape Town. And then on Thursday, we are being picked up and we're going to the wine country, um, a couple different areas of the wine country that are pretty well known. And we'll spend the day there on Thursday. And then um, Friday morning, our friends leave to go back home. And Friday night, we leave to start our journey back home, which will be a very long journey. 
I hear, Ben, that it's been really rainy, and I'm actually really excited about that. I'm so glad you guys have been getting so much rain. And I looked at the weather um, for when we arrive, and it looks like it's still going to be raining when we get home, so I'm very excited about that. But it's the weather's been beautiful here. We had a little bit of rain when we were at Victoria Falls. Being a rainforest, it makes sense, but we haven't been hindered at all by the rain. We haven't really had any rain. So the weather has just been absolutely beautiful, not as hot as we thought it was going to be. Definitely more humid here in um, Zimbabwe, and, and uh, it was a little less humid um, in Botswana. But Rwanda was perfect. The weather was absolutely perfect. So, uh, so it's, been, it's, been really, it's been really wonderful. So we've got a few more adventures in, in Cape Town, and then, uh, and then I'm coming home. We have a 17-hour flight from Dubai. That, trying to just stay positive about it. Um, we have a nine hour flight from Cape Town to Dubai and then a 17 hour flight from Dubai to San Francisco. So I'm gonna get a lot more reading done and uh, and 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 writing, etc. So so I hope you guys are all doing well. Um, one bit of news I want to share with you is that we've already sold out of the Thailand event um, trip. So I've been organizing a Thailand trip. Um, for October 2017 and we are officially sold out. So everyone who has expressed interest in coming has made their deposits and um, soon it will be um, official um, come uh, mid-January but um, I'm really excited about that. It really it's really lovely that so many people are interested in coming to Thailand, um, having wonderful adventures with me and um, and David, and uh, and we're looking forward to that. So so that's a bit of news that is is very exciting, and uh, yeah, just pretty pretty excited to get back home. I miss my laptop. I know it sounds silly, but I do miss my computer. I miss being able to to uh, to write freely and easily. I have my iPad with me, but it's not the same thing. Elizabeth, yeah, in reference to the long plane flight, what, did you give me a sad face or something? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It is it is what it is, right? Many people have done it before, and I will just have to survive, and I will, and it means I'm getting home faster. So luckily we only have the one stop over in Dubai, and then um, and that should be pretty fast, and then we, we hop on the plane, and we'll be on the plane for 17 hours. So anything else from you guys? Any questions? Any thoughts? Any needs? Anything at all? I think I mentioned as soon as I get home, I'm also going to be heading over to the uh, KQED radio station, the NPR radio station in San Francisco, where I'm a uh, contributor, and I'm going to be um, pretty excited. I'm going to be recording my um, uh, editorial about inauguration, the word inauguration, and if you're interested in what I'm talking about, you can go check out the Animology podcast, since it's one of the new episodes of the new podcast, Animology, and I submitted a version to KQED, and they accepted, and I'm going to be recording that. So prior to the inauguration, which is on January 20th, I they will air this um, editorial that I've written about the animals hiding in the word inauguration. So I'm excited about that. Hey, Katie, thank you. Yeah, well, we've already been talking about it, uh, possibly organizing some kind of trip to Africa. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. But it's it's very possible that we could do something like that. The more manageable version would be probably a safari, and it would most likely be in Botswana. But we're just playing with these ideas. Um, I am also, um, I've decided, because I actually am going to be in the UK in July, so we just kind of decided as we've been talking about this, that it looks like I'm probably not going to do my compassion immersion retreat in California this year, the one that I did last year in, in Oakland. It looks like I might do a one day event in, uh, in London. So if anybody is interested in that, let me know, send an email, um, and just express interest. But, um, but I'm going to start the wheels turning on, on doing a one day event in, uh, in London. So trip to Africa might take a little longer to organize, but it's not off the table. It's always possible. Everything's always possible. Um, but the Thailand trip, the fact that that sold out so quickly is, um, is really, uh, says a lot to me about, um, what people are looking for and what they want and how valuable it is to be able to provide a quality, 
um, really luxury uh, and of course vegan uh, trip for um, for everybody and of course uh, you know me being able to control it and do it myself means that I can really um, um, when I say myself, I'm obviously doing it with the help of my very good friend, um, Sebastian Ranger, who lives in Thailand. And um, But us doing it together means that I'm controlling all of the quality. So it's going to be pretty fabulous. And if this one works as well as I hope it will, and six, six of the people who came on our Italy trip are coming to this Thailand trip. So that's really exciting too. Um, but if it works, then we'll do more like this. The next one might be Vietnam because that really makes a lot of sense. And I think it's a place where a lot of people don't want to travel on their own or they're afraid of not being able to eat vegan. And Vietnam can be a little more annoying, certainly more annoying. At Thailand's very easy and wonderful, but Vietnam can put a lot of um, fish, and fish sauce and animal products and everything. So, um, so Vietnam might be the next one. We're not necessarily finding other vegans here, but we're definitely finding vegan friendliness. Um, everybody's been accommodating. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I've actually gotten sick on this trip, but I've been a trooper and uh, not letting it get me down. But yeah, you can probably hear that. Um, but everyone's been very accommodating uh, everywhere we've been, whether it's been in Rwanda or Botswana. They might not know what vegan means, but they, 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 as soon as they learn what it is, they, they accommodate us. I don't think we've met another vegan. We've also been in small groups. It's pretty much just been us. Um, in Rwanda, it was pretty much just us, and that was we were there for a full week. In Botswana, it was us at the camps and just a couple other people who were there at the camps, pretty pretty small groups, and we're not really interacting with too many other people. And there's been a lot of, you know, people eating meat at these places as well, but they make everything vegan for us, and it's been fabulous. Uh, and then here in Zimbabwe, we're at kind of a bigger touristy place, but um, so we're not interacting with other people much. So the most interaction we've had is with our guides and with the staff at the different places we've been. So, um, <coughs> and like I said, everyone's been been really wonderful. Oh, that's right, we did. That's right, I forgot, Bridie. I knew I, there was there was something I was forgetting. Bridie just reminded me. We did. Um, we met um, um, Kate. She is a an astrophysicist um, at the at the Gorilla Mountain View Lodge. She was there on her own, traveling on her own. And, uh, and she's also vegan. So you're right. Thank you. I completely forgot about that. So, uh, so that was kind of fun because I can't remember who follows me here, uh, who had been mentioning that her sister was also traveling or in the same place. This was back in Rwanda and, uh, and we happened to be staying at the same place. So you're right. We, um, we did meet another vegan, um, who's awesome. And she's got like a huge following on, on Twitter. She's an astrophysicist who, uh, does a lot to educate and, uh, and um, raise awareness about um, just science in general. So what is her name on Twitter, Brady? Is it just Astro Kate? Might be Astro Kate on Twitter. So that's right. And she was awesome. So yes, and we did meet other vegans because we met gorillas. So those were some vegans we met. Gorillas. And if you haven't seen the, the photos and the videos of the gorillas yet, I don't know what you're waiting for because... It was the highlight. It was definitely the highlight of this whole trip. And yeah, it's been it's been pretty amazing. I think it's Astro Kate. I think it's Astro Kate. Brady's checking. <coughs> so we're heading out now. We're gonna check out and then um, in fact we have to go check out pretty soon. Yep, ten thirty I think we have until. And, um, and then we are starting our journey to Cape Town. It's going to be pretty much a day of travel, having to go first to Johannesburg again and then from Johannesburg to Cape Town. And we will be there um, tonight. So the next group of photos and videos you'll see would be, will be in Cape Town. And um, I'm excited. Oh, you're so sweet, Varid. Um, his back pain is still there. It's, um, he's, it hasn't hindered him at all on the trip, which is good, but there's definitely the lingering pain. Um, the one day that it was the most difficult was the day we were trekking for chimpanzees in the forest, in the mountains. Like we were literally like up and down these mountains, um, running around trying to find chimpanzees, which was worth it. But, um, he had a pretty, pretty hard time after that. And then it started, um, just calming down again. 
So when we get back home, we're going to have to follow up on all of that. But thanks for asking. He's, he's, he's okay, and at least it hasn't hindered the trip. That's the, main, that's the main thing. And he's just a trooper. I'd be complaining the entire time. But, but, but stopping complaining is one of my um, New Year's resolutions. So I, I, if I had back pain, I guess I'd have to not complain. But it would be hard because he's much braver than I am. Um, Astro Katie is uh, her name. Thank you for checking, Brady. Astro Katie. Um, so yeah, if you want to follow a vegan astrophysicist on Twitter, Astro Katie is your gal. So that's it, everybody. Um, thanks for joining me. I don't even know what time it is anywhere. Let's see. It's probably about 9, 10, 11. So it's close to midnight in California, which means it's almost 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, East Coast time, which means it's what? 6 a.m. or so in the UK. I'm so glad. That's so. I'm so glad. Thank you for watching all the videos. Thanks for following me on, on all these places. And uh, it's been really a joy to share everything with you. So um, enjoy. Share them. Um, I'm going to be getting them up on YouTube as well. Um, and then I still have more Q and A's. Um, people have been asking questions about the whole trip and who we used and how we organized it and where we stayed and what we ate. And so there's lots of lots more to come and, and hopefully I'll be able to do a, um, a podcast on it, but I've got to get right back to animology once I get home. So go check out animology, make sure you subscribe, um, on iTunes and, and Stitcher, etc. And, uh, and there'll be lots more to come when I get back. So thanks for watching everybody and have a wonderful day. Next time I see you, I'll be in Cape Town. So take care.